into an orbit around Mercury. And this is in February, March of 97, and they're going to be, they're going to tell us they're here for sure. That'll be the latest. The highest probabilities are, is that by the end of November of this year, after Spielberg's movie about Roswell is released, they're going to start telling you that they're coming, that they picked up signals. And the truth is they picked up signals back in 1960, you know. Um, and in fact, they were already on the moon in 1960 with extraterrestrial help. So, I mean, the whole thing is a conspiracy within a conspiracy within a conspiracy, and it is all to keep, keep us fat, dumb, and stupid. Not to spook the herd, as a friend of mine said. Because they fear us. They fear us. Because if we stand together and we ask for benevolent help, folks, it's going to be there. In fact, I've been told that the Andromeda Council has already decided to directly intervene, but I don't know what that is. I can tell you this, that the Pleiadians are at full-fledged war with the Greys outside our solar system. They're, they're dying on both sides. This is going on, and the Hubble telescope sees it, and there are two Hubble telescopes, not one. The Russians sent one up, but you're not being told about that. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> Olympus Mons, 15 miles high, 1979, NASA admitted that they saw water vapor and ice clouds going over it. That's 90,000 feet. <laughs> okay, that's higher than the clouds on our planet. Now we're told that the circumference of Mars is 4,200 feet. The Andromedans say, eh, wrong. They say it's 11,230 miles. It's three times the size we're being told it is. The Andromedans also say that if you look at the planets in your solar system and you look at the brightness of those planets, that is proof that we live in a binary star system. They say we have two suns. But because of the rotation and the position of our planet, we never see the system. But if you're on Venus, Mercury, or the others, you would see it. They rotate around each other. I, I realize it flies in the face of everything. I'm just here sharing with you, and I'm just asking you to keep an open mind. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay. Um, Cydonia is in the northern hemisphere. Now I'm told that at one time most of that area was covered with water. And that along the equator of Mars is where most of the colonial cities were, colonies, outposts. They said much of the bigger cities on Mars before it was destroyed was in the southern hemisphere. Now I want you to, can, honey, can we focus on just the shape? I want you to focus on this area right in here. Now this, is, this area is known as our great plantation. This is in the southern hemisphere. Now, there's a little happy face. Yeah. I, I thought that was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but if we go to the next slide. This apparently is another tomb that was in fact destroyed. And these are three more pyramid, pyramids that are lined up just like Giza. This area right here. And that these are also ruins. This is what they say. And folks, they've never lied to me. Right here. They want us desperately to wake up. Now they have their own selfish reasons. Okay, because of the fact of the problems that apparently come up in the future. But there's also another reason. Many of the human races in our galaxy, because of so much interbreeding between the one race, the genetics apparently are starting to break down. There's only one race in our galaxy that can give these particular human races a genetic boost, and that's us. But they can't use our genetics. They can't even approach us because of the vibration we all move at, which is fear and anger. They say when we're not taking advantage of others, we're taking advantage of ourselves. <laughs> That's correct. 
where it's, it's, well, it hasn't stopped the regressives because they vibrate at this frequency, and they've also helped to propagate the belief, many of the belief systems that we have right now. Um, we have real problems because this is all coming to a head by the year 2000. Um, they're going to be here in 97. And, uh, I mean, you know, official protocol ships from Orion are going to be here. Now, I want to share with you some of the things that the Greys are up to. Many people say they've left. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but apparently they're still here, and they have no intentions of leaving because they need us. They are desperately trying to save their race by using our genetics, but it isn't working. They can create the form, but they can't put soul in the body. That's a gift. Now, here's what they're doing. This is what I'm told they're doing. I'm told that many of the abductions that are occurring now, that the vital body, the aura of the people being abducted, which is primarily the females in a family, and it's usually the first and second daughter and the mother, what they're doing is they're peeling off the vital body, the closest part to the energy field, and they are storing it and they are feeding it to the hybrids that have that mother's genetics in it. And apparently they're doing this to keep them alive. And they're also apparently trying to create soul. They think by stealing your aura, the vital body, in your energy field and giving it to another, that it will create soul. You need to be aware of this. Okay, this is why a lot of folks who are weird things are happening, they're getting real sick and run down, is because your vital life force is being stripped from you. And folks, there is a violation of free will big time going on here. You know, there are a lot of lines in metaphysics. And one of them says that you are you create your own reality. Well that's true. But there is a violation of free will. And we are being violated big time. And our race has been for the last fifty four hundred years. I'm dealing with the race we know ourselves now as Homo sapiens sapien. I don't know, is there another slide? Ah, Phobos. Phobos is an artificial moon. This is where the majority of the 2,000 real graves that are left are hiding out, is on Phobos. And when you look at pictures of Phobos, when you go through your magazines or you go through, um, you know, the astronomy magazines, I'm told that you should, I've, I've been asked to share with you the idea that you should look very carefully about the inside of craters. That many of the openings that lead into this are inside, inside the craters, that the bottoms open up and the ships come in and the ships come out. Okay? Now, Phobos is a major anomaly because it goes counterclockwise to everything else in our solar system. It rotates counterclockwise to everything else. Uh, let's see, there's one more. Okay, this is the North Pole of Jupiter. This is a photograph taken by the Voyager. No, I'm sorry, the Galileo. Anybody care to tell me what that might be? <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> yes, that's the North Pole. When it went over, they photographed this sitting there. <laughs> it could be. It could be. I'm, I'm just sharing it with you because I want you to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a satellite. It's an alien satellite that they caught on top. Are they analyzing the surface? That's a very good answer. I know it is. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next slide, please. This is Ganymede. Ganymede's another artificial satellite. Um, Ganymede has life on it, has water, has an atmosphere, has oxygen. Um, many of the benevolent races use this as a base. This is Ganymede. Has an atmosphere, has oxygen. 
Um, many of the benevolent races use this as a base. This is Ganymede. I'm sorry? That's Jupiter. It's one of the moons of Jupiter. Now, if you look carefully at the satellite we just sent up there, and you look at the rotation of what it's focusing on, um, the, the moons that it's focusing on will tell you an awful lot about what it is that they're looking for. They do nothing um, without a reason. And... Uh, Okay, next next slide, please. I think that's the last one. That's the last one. Okay, we can have the lights be great. Thank you, Dean. Okay, I can I can come out from behind here. <laughs> Okay, I want to share this with you, um, this last thing. I was told that March 23, 1994, that 19 suns pole shifted in our galaxy, and that many are pole shifting all the time. At exactly the same moment that the suns in our galaxy pole shifted, a color and sound frequency started emanating from all the black holes in the known universe. Now, apparently what this sound and color frequency is doing, it is literally creating a holographic density above all, all, all others. And on a numerical level, it would be, on our level, it would be considered the 12th. The Andromedans say that there are 11 creational densities in our universe. This is now adding a 12th. And that what it's doing is that it is literally lifting all the dimensions up. 11 is going to 12, 10 to 11, etc. Now they say that all indications are that by December 3rd, in our linear time of the year 2013, third density as we know it will cease to exist. It is now presently imploding on itself as it is being raised to a higher vibration. And that those of us who stick around and go for the ride will be moving through fourth into fifth density. Just like that. And that we will start to see very clear indications of this um, around the year 2007. Now, apparently the Andromedan Council, which is a group of 139 planetary systems, and I can't tell you exactly how many races because I don't know, has made a decision and has told all of the extraterrestrial influences in our solar system, both benevolent and non-benevolent, and those who are in the middle, to be out of this solar system no later than August 12, 2003. I don't know how they're going to back it up, but apparently they've decided they're going to. So they want them all out of here. Now, <laughs> if, if this happens, and they do leave, you're going to see incredible things. If they do not, I have been told to tell you this, that there's a very high probability that we will wake up one morning or go outside one night and the moon will not be there. It will be towed towards Jupiter. And they will deal with the energies that are there out there. Because if they have to go to battle and the moon gets destroyed, it will destroy most of the Earth because you know pieces of it will come here. Plus, it has an energy source inside of itself. Okay, it's a spacecraft. Um, so this is another possibility, and you know, um, I talked about the tides. I mentioned the tides, and more. And I said, "Hey, that's no big deal. We just get you another one." <laughs> Apparently, it's no big deal. You know, planetary science is no big deal when you're at that level of technology. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know that the moon has moved closer to Earth. What do they say about that? About two years ago? Um, apparently, it's it's moving closer all the time. Um, the Andromedans say that it's moving nine inches closer to us, and we're not being told um, about anything about it. They're also they also have said that Mars is also moving closer to us as well. That it's moving closer. I don't know what it is. Unless it's to disrupt the uh, uh, the gravity pull will create earthquakes. 
what's nine inches have to do with 240,000 miles? I don't know, sir. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Where you get to where people can the back can 